welcome back to Each Perfect Beauty. I thought it might be fun today to do a soft, fresh spring makeup look. Um, really glowy, really fresh, uh, very on trend right now. What I did was I went to Sephora, which is always dangerous for me because it's like me entering the mothership. I went there uh, last week and I picked up a couple of things. Uh, I picked up a couple of palettes. One of them is the Naked 3, Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. And I really think this is going to be one of those palettes from Urban Decay that I use a lot because it's got beautiful soft colors, uh, very pastel-y colors at the front, which is really perfect for this time of year. And then, you know, darker colors that you can kind of build into a more dramatic look if you want to for evening or, you know, if you just feel like being a little bit dramatic. So I'm going to... I'm going to do a very glowy look today. I'm going to show you the, the products that I use and build to get that glowy look. Uh, and I hope you enjoy this. Let's get going. I'm going to start with building products underneath my foundation that will help uh, a soft, pretty glow come through after I do apply my foundation. I'm going to start with a MAC strobe cream. Now, I'm not going to apply this everywhere. I'm going to apply this just on the areas where I really want to see a little bit of glow coming through. This is a really great product. It's got a little bit of a pinky undertone. Um, it does have some sheen to it, so you probably, as you can see, you probably don't want to wear this all over your face um, because I think you end up looking a little bit too dewy, a little bit too sparkly all over. But I like putting it just in those areas where I want to build that pretty glow, that spring pretty glow that we're going to go for today. Okay, so I'm going to go in with MAC Face and Body. I don't really want a heavy foundation, and I find this one is one of those I can build on it, but it still lets my skin show through, so it's going to be good with the, the MAC Strobe Cream underneath it. I'm just going to apply it with my hands first. And then buff it out with a brush, a foundation brush after. going to use my Smashbox foundation brush. Now I was with a client yesterday and we did a very similar look to this um, and it really really looked good on her and she loved it and I thought you know what we actually videotaped that as well which I'm <clears throat> I did it on my phone so I'm not entirely sure it's going to work out perfectly but I'm going to take a look at it later today and see if I'm if I can upload it as well um, but I thought you know what I'm going to do this myself because I like <laughs> I like the look so much I'm just going to um, put a little bit more foundation on just around these areas where I get a little bit red and then just use a little sponge to Blend that in. Stipple it in. Okay. Now I'm going to let, as I often do, I'm going to let my foundation uh, just cover the face, just give it an overall uh, light coverage, and then I'm going to go in and let my concealer do the heavy lifting. Okay, I found out that actually I read this week that the uh, uh, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, this concealer is one of the best, and on Amazon it was picked as one of the best top selling um, beauty products ever. I think it's ever. Or, yeah, it is ever. Um, it's a great concealer. For the price you can't go wrong. I often use it just as a, a little bit like a foundation, just a to cover up those areas where I need a little bit extra coverage. I'm gonna go in with a NYX concealer underneath the eye, it's a little bit lighter. Stipple that in with my finger. And then I use a sponge just to get it set right in. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bit of a frog in my throat this morning. I've been working really hard this week. It's been a good week. Lots of bookings, lots of stuff going on. Spring has sprung here in Toronto. Finally, it's been a really long winter. Okay, so we've got that, we've got that base on right now. And what I want to do now is put a little bit of a liquid highlighter just on the top of the cheek. Today I'm going to go in with 
Today I'm going to go in with high beam. almost fell there. I'm going to go in with high beam just on the top of the cheek area. I like to do it at this point just so that the liquid, the liquid product has a little bit of time to, you know, mix in with the foundation that I put on and sink into the skin, become kind of one with the skin. Gives a more natural finish, I find, than putting it on at the very end. And you'll notice I'm, I'm literally just stippling that right on the top of that cheekbone. I'm staying away from my lines and wrinkles. I'm not putting it all over. So you've noticed how I've been layering here. Start with the strobe cream, go with a, a light finish more uh, foundation, then go in with some concealer, do a little bit of concealing, then go in with a liquid highlighter. All right, so let's move on. I'm gonna go in with an eyeshadow primer. And this is a question I get asked a lot from my clients. Is it necessary to use an eyeshadow primer? And the answer is, if you're going to use powder eyeshadow, absolutely it's necessary. Um, it's one of these products that you don't use a lot of. If you overuse it, you won't be able to blend and you'll get you know, the opposite effect. But if you use just a little bit, uh, what it does is it uh, creates a good base for eyeshadow to grab a hold of so you get better color payoff. So what you see in the pan, you often get on your eye uh, and it gives longevity not you know it's not going to give you 24 hours but it's going to it's going to give you those few extra hours of your eyeshadow not moving which is what we really want if we're going to take the time to do this type of look right we want it to last and it also helps with creasing if you happen to have oily eyelids which a lot of women have a really good idea is just to add a little bit of tiny little bit of um your primer first and then a smidge of powder just on top just a nice loose powder, you don't want anything heavy, very um, finely milled, just a little bit on top, just to mattify it ever so little. You don't want to overdo the powder on top of the eyelid, but just a little bit will help give uh, better longevity for you. You won't get, you're still gonna obviously get some oiliness that's gonna come through throughout the day, but it's gonna help prolong it a little bit longer before you have to deal with that. Okay, so now that that's in, sunk in, I'm gonna go in with uh, this color right here. It's kind of that soft pinky color, peachy pinky color right here. I'm gonna go in and just use this right on, I'm just gonna bring this in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna use this right in this area, in that crease area. Now I'm gonna keep my eye open here because I really wanna see where I'm placing this. I have one eye, which we all, often all of us have to deal with this. I have one eye that is, a little bit smaller than the other. I have one that's a little more hooded than the other. So I like to apply my creaser with my eyes open, stand back and look to see where it is. Because I like to actually see a little bit of eyeshadow when I open up my eye. I don't want all the way up here, but I want to be able to see a little bit of it. I'll just go in and do the other eye, same thing. I find that a lot of women, when they're applying their eyeshadow, when I'm doing lessons, what they do is they'll pull up the eyelid or they'll, you know, make sure that their eyebrows are as high as they can possibly be just because they want to be able to see the product when really all you have to do is look straight in, just like as you normally would, and just apply that eyeshadow where you want it, where you actually want it to be. And you'll, you have to adjust. You have to stand back, you have to look, you have to make sure it's where you want it to be. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna take whatever's left on my brush and just build it into the sides, the corners here. Okay, so far so good. And then I'm gonna go in with just a, a flat brush and I'm gonna go in with this color here. It's called Burnout, very pretty color. It's got a little bit of sheen to it. And I'm just going to apply that all over the lid, right up into the crease. I'm not gonna go into the crease with this, just on that mobile lid. Like so. Okay. 
I love that color. It's so pretty. It's like a pinky, peachy, very pretty color. Burnout. Don't know why it's called Burnout, but it's very pretty anyway. Take my blending brush, take a softer blending brush, and then just blend out those edges. You know me, when in doubt, blend again. Just gonna go back in with that first color. Blend that out a little bit more, add a little bit more. Okay, then I'm gonna take this end color. I think it's called Strange, or this one right here, and just apply a little tiny bit of that just on underneath the brow bone here. Or sorry, right on the brow bone is what I should have said. And just use my finger to blend that out. Okay, now I'm gonna go in <clears throat> with this little detail brush and I'm going to use this gray color here. It's really pretty gray color here. And I'm just gonna lightly pull my eye out and I'm gonna use this as a soft liner right on the lash line. Like so. And same with the other side. Just that wash of color, that little bit of drama right on the lash line. And then just bring it out, out and up just a little bit. And I just keep building it until I get the depth that I'd like. That is a very nice gray color. It's not too dirty. Some grays I find can look quite dirty and when you get a little bit older and your skin gets a little more sallow, gray, some grays can look really dirty on your skin. This is really pretty. It's got a, a, a little bit of a sheen to it, but not over the top. You know what? I think this is a great palette. I think this is one of those palettes from um, Urban Decay that I will get a lot of use out of. Okay, I'm going to go back in with my blending brush and just blend all of that out softly. Just go back in. I didn't add any more product. I just want to create a little bit more Eunice in there with that gray. Alrighty, so far so good. Okay, now we're gonna go in with a little detail brush. I'm gonna use that same gray again, right on the bottom lash line here. Try to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Any fallout that we get from this, these shadows, which often happens when you're using anything that has some glitter particles to it, we will clean up after. I'm making sure that those, there's no little naked spot here. You know that drives me crazy. All right, so I've added mascara on top and the bottom. I've just done my eyebrows quite quickly. You know how I do it. I've done it in several videos. Let's get into blush and finishing off this little glow that we that I really would like to do here. I'm gonna go in with a Clinique blush called uh, Rosy Pop. It's very pretty. 
and I really want this springy, fresh look here. So this is the perfect color. Really want to focus on just getting this apple of the cheek area with some color. And then doing that soft C direction. Give it a very fresh look, like I've just been out in the fresh air. I'm finding that the older I get, that the, the more I feel like I need blush. I've always loved blush. I mean, I've always been one of those women that I need to have my blush, I need to have my mascara, uh, and I need my eyebrows done. And I know other women are like, I need to have my um, concealer, and I need to have my eyebrows done, or I need to have my lipstick done. I'm one of these women that have always liked my blush. And now I'm finding as I get older, I really, I need it even more than I used to, I think, when I was younger. And when I was younger, I just had a natural, you know, fresh glow to my skin anyways, but I still like using blush. But, you know, now I think it's more necessary. Okay, now we're gonna go in with, and you know I love it, uh, my Hourglass strobing powder, as they call it. I'm just gonna use the same brush, same blush brush. And I'm just gonna brush that glow onto my cheeks. And you'll notice I'm doing it all the way across the blush, not just the top of the cheekbone now. Because this, this powder is, it has, it's more sheen than it is glittery. So I can move it around a little bit more in the face and not have to be concerned that it's going to look like I'm a big glitter ball by the time I'm done. And I just keep digging that in, working that into that cheek area. If you feel like you've gone too far down, you can just take your sponge and clean up around that area. And then I'm just gonna use a buffing brush just to make sure that it's in really well. I hope you can see that glow. Okay, I think I need a wee bit more concealer underneath the eye, just a tad. It's another thing that seems to be a necessary evil in my life these days is <laughs> concealer. And just nail those dark circles. Be gone. It's a good concealer this as well. That's the NYX HD concealer. Really good. I won't even tell you what it compares to, but it's about an eighth of the price of the one that I carry in my kit and I think it does just as good a job, just as good of a job as my more expensive concealers. I'm gonna go in with a nude eyeliner on the bottom waterline. I don't wanna use white or anything that's too stark, but I want to just brighten up that bottom, uh, bottom waterline area. So I'm gonna use just a nude pencil. This is um, from Rimmel, and it's just called Nude and just apply that right on the waterline. You don't have to do this. This is just a little trick if you, if you like the look. And what that does is brighten up that eye area. Now, with these type of pencils, anytime you put any kind of you know pencil in your waterline, you're gonna find that it doesn't last. Um, it's just the nature of the business, really. I mean, it's it's an oil base. It's it's going to rub off eventually. So you do have to, if you like this look, you do have to keep keep on adding uh, throughout the day. You know, it probably lasts for me. Um, it lasts maybe three, four hours before I have to reapply it again. Uh, so that is that look. That's the cheek done. I'm going to go in with this beautiful lip color that I got from Buxom, and it's called Rebel Rose. Now, you know I love my Buxom lip colors, right? I mean, I'm always, I'm always showing them on uh, all my videos. But this one, I've never tried their lipsticks before. I've had their lip uh, liquid 
you know, I've got their liquid products, I've got their liquid, liquid lipsticks, and they're great. This one, it's got a satin finish. Super color for this time of year. It's gonna go in and give those edges a bit of a blur. And then I'm gonna just pop a little bit of gloss. This is a NYX gloss. It's one of their butter glosses. Love them too. Right in the center. Just to give, finish off this glowy look that we've got. Glowy spring look. All right, so here's your finished look. Let me know below if you like this, if you like this getting ready kind of video, um, or if you would rather see some other kind of content from me. I would appreciate your suggestions below. It would help me out with my uh, content calendar. I appreciate you watching this video very much, and I appreciate you subscribing, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Age Perfect Beauty.